the first problem we look at concerns some object, some arbitrary object, could be a cart, could be an object we're uh, moving, uh, any object we're moving in some direction. And we have a force, I mean a distance, uh, or displacement of 15 meters. So we're going to move this object through a displacement of 15 meters with an 8 newton force. So we have an 8 newton force in the object, a 15 meter displacement. The question is, how much work do we do on the object? <coughs> now, nothing in the statement of the problem requires that the force be the net force. But let's just for now assume that the 8 newtons is the net force acting on the object. Uh, for example, 8 newtons might not be the net force if we're sliding a block along a, the floor, let's say, and we're exerting an 8 newton force to slide the block, and the floor is exerting, let's say, 3 newtons of friction in the opposite direction. Then we wouldn't have an 8 newton net force. In that case, the net force might be 5 newtons, assuming there are no other forces uh, acting. Okay, in any case, for now, let's go ahead and assume that 8 newtons is the net force. So if we have an 8 newton net force, and if the displacement delta s, the vector displacement, is parallel to the force, so that the 8 newton net force and the delta s are parallel, then the amount of work done is just the product of the force and the displacement. 8 newtons times 15 meters. Now 8 times 15 is 120. A newton times a meter is a newton meter. And a newton meter is something we're going to call a joule. That's the unit we use for energy. So we have 120 joules of work or energy. Okay, 120 joules of work is done. 120 joules of energy is expended to do that work. That's how we're going to say that. Now let's look at the important parts of this problem. First of all, this F delta S equals delta W only works if the force is parallel to the displacement. If the force was not parallel to this displacement, then we'd have to take the vector component of the force in the direction of the displacement or parallel to the displacement. Okay, now, if 8 newtons is the net force, and let's note, very importantly, that 8 newtons is the, uh, well, the 8 newton force does the same work whether or not it's the net force. We really don't care whether the 8 newtons is the net force or not. That's how much work it does. But if it is the net force, and in this case we've assumed that it is, so since by assumption 8 newtons is the net force here, then we're going to conclude that the change in the kinetic energy or the change in the 1 half mv squared of the object um, is equal to that 120 joules. So I guess we should say that this equals 120 joules. Now let's look at a second example. In this case, we have some displacement delta S, and the displacement is unknown. We know that we have a 7 Newton net force and we want to know how far the object has to be pushed to gain 14 joules of energy, presumably uh, if we follow up on the last example, kinetic energy. So how far do we have to push with a 7 Newton net force in order for this object to gain 14 joules? Well, if the work done, which is equal to the net force times delta S, is equal to the change in kinetic energy, as it has to be if the 7 newtons is, in this case, is the net force, then F net times delta S will equal the change in kinetic energy, so the delta S will be the change in kinetic energy divided by F net. Uh, change in kinetic energy is equal to the work done, the 14 joules, divided by the 7 newtons, and 14 joules is 14 newton meters divided by 7 newtons. The newtons divide out, and we end up with 2 meters. So we'd have to push for two meters to gain 14 joules 
of kinetic energy using a net force of 7 newtons. Let's zoom back just a little bit so we can see all of this. In a third situation, we have some unknown force that's going to push an object 8 meters. And we want to know how much force is necessary to expend 96 joules of energy. So let's say that this force is being exerted by some entity that has 96 joules of energy to expend. Okay, what force should that entity exert here through a distance of 8 meters in order to expend that 96 joules? Well, the energy expended then will equal the work done by that force. Now this doesn't depend on whether this is the net force or not. This is whatever force. Okay? Um, we're not assuming that it's the net force. It's just the force that's being exerted by that entity, by a person, by a battery, uh, by something that has some energy to expend. If that entity exerts a certain force through the distance, it will expend all 96 joules. So that we have this relationship to find the force. We simply divide the delta W by the delta S and we get 96 joules divided by 8 meters which is 96 newton meters divided by 8 meters or 12 joules or 12 newtons I'm sorry. Okay so to do 96 joules of work now a couple of principles here requires 96 joules of energy in some form and from some source that's the entity the mysterious entity that we're talking about. Uh, and also the 12 newton force is not necessarily the net force. If we have to exert 12 newtons to get the object there, then so be it. We might be exerting that 12 newtons, but the net force is only 6 newtons because there's 6 newtons of friction. So that the gain in kinetic energy will not necessarily equal the work that we do. But we still have to do that work. Our work would increase our kinetic energy and some of our work would overcome friction in a case like the one I just mentioned where we have a frictional force resisting the motion.